Hello, and welcome to Tiny Desk Dating with Emma. Today, uh, it's very early, and I remember that it's Monday, and I forgot to record this weekend, so I'm recording now on Monday morning. It's a little bit later than it should be. I may have stayed in bed for 10 minutes longer, but um, yeah, it's early on Monday, and I was like, well, I could do this tomorrow and just upload it on Tuesday. But I thought, you know, I should, um, I should just get it done upload it now, not have to worry about it. So here I am at my kitchen table in the dining room. This is a dining room table. I'm no longer recording at a tiny desk. I haven't recorded at a tiny desk for a long time, but the name still felt right. <laughs> anyway, um, and I, I like got out of bed and I was like, oh, I can't just wear a, a hoodie. I, I, gotta, I gotta put on some knitwear. So I put on this shirt, which is, um, it's a t-shirt that I made in the winter. It is, I don't know what pattern I used. I feel like I just used like the Cozy Classic Raglan, but it's like a little bit looser gauge. I must have used, I must have just used my, my brain to be like, okay, I'm just gonna make the gilk that deep and I'm gonna, it's just a raglan, I don't know. I think I probably just cast on some number from some book. And, um, and then I was like, okay, well at that point, like at the point where there's this many stitches based on the gauge, that will fit me. And I just knitted until I had that many on the increases and then I split off the sleeves and I knit the body and let's see how long it is. It's like quite long. It's not, um, it's not like really cropped. And I had, basically I had a hundred grams of a, of a fingering weight. It was a merino silk single. It wasn't just a merino single. So the merino silk singles are really, really amazing. They're like shimmering um, and they're like, I, I don't really, if you if you can get merino silk singles, I dyed it. Like I, I dyed a bunch of those and I dyed mohair. And so it was 50 grams of, of green mohair and 50, 100 grams of the, the single. And so there's about, about the same amount of yardage. And so I held the two yards together. And I didn't know how big the shirt would be. And I knew if it were at a looser gauge, A, it would be okay if it were at a looser gauge because this is the gauge, it's about 16 stitches over four inches that I use for like Love Note by Tin Can Knits, which I've made a bunch of times. Um, and I said, okay, well, the bigger the gauge, the bigger the shirt will be able to be. And it will be like a properly fitting shirt. So I made a properly fitting shirt. Um, and I was shocked at how long this ended up being just in terms of the you know, how, how much it looks like a regular t-shirt. <laughs> um, so that's cool. And, uh, and I, I made it because I had, I actually had, it was left over from a love note and I made this love note for my friend, Catherine, who's my host mom in England. And she, I made it for her a couple years ago. I think it was right at the beginning of COVID because I'd been staying with Catherine and her family doing my field work, right, or my thesis, right before, COVID started, I actually deleted, well, I left when I was supposed to leave, but it was the beginning of COVID. Sorry, right, I had to get my coffee. That's why that, you probably heard the kettle boiling. <laughs> Keep on the carry on. Anyway, I was staying with Catherine and her family when COVID basically started. And um, so I was knitting them all sweaters. It's like, I thank you for letting me stay with them. Um, if you watch like, 15 episodes ago when I made the Rodari sweater. I made that sweater for Catherine's husband because um, I went back to visit them during um, my spring break this year with my first, when I left England in March, 2020, I was like, I'm not getting back on a plane until I can come back to England. And I, I truly could wait two entire years before getting on a plane again. And the last, the, the next plane I got on was two years later to go back to England. So yeah, I always say Catherine is my host mom, but she's actually the person that I wrote my thesis about too. <laughs> so it's just like easier to explain to my non-music friends. They're like, who are you staying with? I'm like, oh yeah, this host family. Actually, no, we're, we're like colleagues, but, um, but they're really nice. Uh, anyway, I made Catherine a love note because she loves green in this um, yarn and there was a bunch left over. Cause I didn't like, you know, sometimes you don't know, I was dyeing the yarn. I was like, let me just dye an extra one. I don't know. Um, maybe she wants like longer sleeves or like a longer sweater because the love notes kind of cropped and 
ended up having an entire skein of each one left over. And um, so I was like, oh, I can make a shirt. And it took me two years to do it, but I finally made this gorgeous shirt. And when I sent Catherine the sweater, she was like, wow, this feels like water. Like, what is this material? Is it silk? And I was like, actually, yeah, it's mostly silk. <laughs> It's like, well, mohair and then silk, <laughs> about 30% is silk. So it is really comfortable. Um, I have my own sweater, like full sweater in this combination of yarns. Excuse me. It's um, it's like a pale blue. I've probably worn it before. It's really pale, like periwinkle. And I designed the yoke to have the frost flowers lace pattern across it. Um, anyway, I'll link a picture of it in the show notes. I'll link my Ravelry page. Um, but yes, yeah, I'm just killing time because I don't really have a whole lot to talk about today. Um, I was going to talk about a t-shirt that I'm working on that's two pieces and it's almost done, but I think it's going to be done by next week, so maybe I'll wait. I remembered I was making this little tiny baby sweater, and I thought I could talk a little bit about this. Look at that! This is for... Well, he's a newborn right now, but by the time it's cold enough for a baby to wear this sweater, maybe it will fit him. Um, I usually make the newborn size and patterns and then it fits a baby when they're about eight months old. <laughs> so my friends, Christine and Shane, had a baby just about two weeks ago named Holden. He is very cute. And I, as soon as I found out they had the baby, I cast on this tiny sweater. <laughs> um, and it is, um, yeah, so I just wanted to talk about like, okay, let's say somebody in your life has a little kid and or reason that you need to knit them something, how did, um, what was my thought process into like, oh, how am I gonna knit that sweater with my scraps and all that stuff, what pattern am I gonna use and stuff? So this pattern um, is, uh, what's this pattern? This pattern is, Strange Brew by Tin Can Knits. And I find that Tin Can Knits are my favorite patterns for um, babies because Tin Can Knits sizes everything from newborn to 5XL, um, at least, and men's 5XL. And they have a whole host of children's sizes, women's sizes, and to men's sizes. They have graded everything for, um, for all those types of bodies. And I mean, their patterns are generally like pretty seamless, simple types of shaping. Like they don't probably involve like a whole lot of grading, but honestly, that's amazing that they can they can have this range of sizes because they can, because it's, it doesn't take like 10 years to do all the grading math on that. So I think that's a huge um, asset to their patterns and their whole pattern library. So I make, you know, for babies, my, my three go-tos are generally the Flax Light, which is, um, the flax light is, uh, it's finger and weight raglan, and it has, um, the flax and the flax light have those beautiful garter stitch panels down the sleeves. Sometimes I do those and sometimes I don't do those when I'm knitting a flax light for a baby. Um, but flax too, if you have a worsted weight yarn. But if I have like one skein of finger and weight yarn and I want to make a beautiful baby sweater with it, I just make the flax light with generally with no garter panels. And sometimes I add a little short row shaping just just for fun. Um, for um, sometimes I make the love note. I just I just made a love note. I don't think I recorded about it because I was in Vermont when I made it. Another newborn who will probably fit her when she's like eight months old. <laughs> um, and it's for a little girl. So the love note has the lace pattern. So um, I made one. I made a few love notes for like two year olds as well. Um, I think they they're super cute on everybody. And um, then this, which is Strange Brew. So Strange Brew is useful because it's a circular yoke, top down or bottom up, and it comes in three weights. So I, this is my DK, their DK gauge. And so that's a DK one. And I said, let me just use Strange Brew. Strange Brew is for color work sweaters, but you don't need to knit color work sweaters. So I, I just knit this one plain striped and it came out fantastic. So if you're looking for a pattern for a baby sweater, I would suggest Strange Brew. Um, I mean, I would suggest getting the whole ebook because they have all these beautiful color work patterns and then they also have the recipe to make your own color work sweater. 
which I love. So there you go. It's just the best. It's the best, most useful ebook. And I went stash diving to knit this. Um, I have my scraps divided. By, by stash diving, I mean scrap diving. I went scrap diving to, to knit this. Could have easily knit this in tons of stash yarn, but um, I thought, let's let's use this. let's use the scraps. So I keep my scraps divided by weight. So I have like bulky or an Aran. I have a, a huge thing of just Aran weight scraps that are like from Briggs and Little and like Peace Fleece and the really like woolly ones, Harrisville. That's another separate bag. Um, I have DK, which is where I stashed dove for these. I think maybe the sport yarns are in there as well. I have, and then a fingering weight, I have Shetland fingering weight. I have like worsted spun woolly fingering weight yarns. And then I have like sock yarn fingering weight yarns. And then I have singles as well. So the fingering weight yarns is just like, there's, it's very organized. Although the sock and the regular fingering weight yarns sometimes go into the same bag if I'm trying to knit like when I made like my little rainbow tank top that I was wearing in two episodes ago that was um that was like a mix of because I mixed all the rainbow ones to choose colors for that um so for this one I used the white and the blue the light blue are both um brown sheep prairie spun dk which is a fairly loosely plied yarn. It's a DK weight. It's very plump, very round. I think it has two plies, but it's quite a round yarn. Oh no, it has more than two plies. It has three plies. Three plies. It's very round, super springy. Like, look at that. 100% wool. It's very, um, Economical. I think you can get it at Webs. You can probably get it at an LYS near you, maybe. Um, they do have it at Must Love Yarn in Burlington, which is, or Shelburne, Vermont, which is my LYS at home. And yeah, it's not expensive. You can, you can get it um, in a variety of nice colors. I will link, I think this is like called like Cornflower or something. Not positive. I'll link the colorway in the show notes because I know I've got it somewhere. And I made a Boulogne, Boulogne sweater, Boulogne by Orlando Zuch. Um, I think that's her name. Uh, out of these yarns, and also a dark blue one, but not the dark blue I'm using in this sweater. Um, <laughs> for a friend, I actually probably could have used that dark blue. I probably had leftovers from that as well. But I made that for my friend, Emma Friend. Her name is Emma Friend, that's why I call her that, but she's also my friend, so that's funny. Um, I think I gave it to her during COVID sometimes. I probably made it right before COVID. And it's like a white sweater with bands of color work in two colors and white sleeves. It was really pretty. She looked beautiful in it. Um, and uh, then this is Knit Picks. Oh, that's attached. Knit Picks. Wool of the Andes Sport in Winter Night. And this is Winter Nights, let's see. Winter Night Singular. So these yarns are basically the same content. They're both 100% wool. Um, they're both worsted spun. I think this one's just two plies. This is a little bit thinner than this one. But honestly, you can pair scraps together for, scri for stripes pretty easily. So I didn't really have any issues with that, um, as you can see, this one stripe is a tiny bit bigger because <laughs> I was like, oh, the yarn is thinner. Let me make this one eight. And you can't really tell the difference. The rest of them are seven. So the stripes are all seven rounds. Um, I did do some short rows, as you can see in the bigger dark blue stripe on the back. Did a little, a little bit of short row action just so that it would fit them a little better. Didn't want that sweater to be coming up too high on the baby's neck. And I knit the sleeves to be the same length as the body because I think I knit the body a little long. But you know, it is what it is. I did use a stretchy bind off for the sleeves so it looks like it's flaring a little bit. Um, I'll link my stretchy bind off. I probably talked about it last week in my, last week. I must've talked about it at some point in a, top, in a video where I was doing toe up socks, which I rarely knit, but I've knit a few more now. And I've, because I've found a 
proper stretchy bind off. So I just wanted the parents to be able to roll the sleeves up easier. So I did a little bit of a looser bind off there. Probably the best strategy there would have been to do a tubular bind off. That would have looked the nicest. And honestly, this was only like, there was only like 28 stitches. I probably could have done a tubular bind off with no trouble, but they take a while. So sometimes I just don't, but yeah. Um, so that's, that's kind of my strategy when knitting baby sweaters just off the cuff. Like, oh, it's a baby now. I gotta knit it something. Um, this is one of my, yeah. Again, like I said, I have a few go-tos depending on Depending on like the parents and their style, like sometimes I knit the little mohair one if it's like a little girl and I don't want to make it too gendered, but it does have hearts on it and I usually make it in pink. Uh, but like, yeah, for a little boy, my friends keep saying it looks like a Hanukkah sweater, but that's fine too. Um, it's a little blue and white. I'm thinking of making his parents like matching hats because I have so much left. <laughs> the sweater's almost done. I, I did, I knit the body last week and then I knit the first sleeve um, yesterday while I was watching an episode of The Crown. Oh, I love The Crown. I haven't watched it in a while, so I watched an episode from season three, the one where um, Uncle Dickie tries to have a coup and it's very exciting and the queen is like in Kentucky looking at horses with her friend and they have to come back to England because her her uncle is trying to overthrow the gover government. Oh, it's her, it's her husband's uncle. It's her like cousin or her, he's like her second cousin or something. If you don't watch The Crown, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's so good. I don't think it's as enjoyable if you don't love Olivia Coleman as much as I do. But that's all I'm gonna say about that for now. If you know me in person, you're like, oh yeah, she loves Olivia Coleman. Um, Anyway, I'm working on these socks, which I think I showed in the last episode. Um, and these are my Jane Bennett socks, and I just did them in this Rama Vandre yarn that are, is really, really um, squishy and, and hardy for socks, and it's worsted weight. That's the yarn. It's like thick. Thickness looks like nice and... Um, sorry if you can't see that. I think that maybe you can see that. So my camera doesn't really like to focus on things. But yeah, there it is. Nice spring. Got the second one half done. Um, and I just wanted to see like how it would knit. This is only 40 stitches because the yarn is quite thick on a size three needle. Um, but yeah, I wanted to, wanted to have a sample of my Jane socks and a thicker weight to see what would happen. And I'm enjoying the pattern a lot more this way because there's fewer stitches and it takes less long. Like I knit this in like one day. My my hands did feel a little stiff after knitting this all in one day, so you know, be careful um, on your hands. If I run a stiff, don't work with it quite as long at it for work short periods at a time so that your hands don't get um, crampy and sad. But yeah, I'm gonna finish my um, little baby sweater hopefully this morning, we'll see. I started watching The Wire, so that was, that's exciting because it takes place in Baltimore, which is where I live. Um, yeah, it's the start of a week. It's hard to have a five-day week sandwiched in between two four-day weeks because <laughs> last week we had Hannah and I, my roommate Hannah and I had Monday off because of Juneteenth and we went to the Eastern Shore and it was gorgeous. It's really nice and serene and very peaceful. I really enjoyed the, um, being on the bay. And then we um, have July 4th is a week from today. So yeah, we're having a party for July 4th and I have to like, we keep forgetting to do just like a little invitation for it. And it's our first like bigger outdoor party, hopefully, because it might thunder. But we have a, a patio right there with some table, a table and some chairs. And we also above, we have a roof top deck that's pretty big so we're trying to have like our first outdoor party with our friends one of my things that I like to do is bringing people together just like I like when my friends make friends with each other um not like matchmaking although I am named after one of the literature's most famous matchmakers 
Um, I, I just like it when my friends become friends. <laughs> I just like that. I'm like a, I'm a connector. I've always been a connector. I, I had like a recent moment here in Baltimore where, um, I haven't even lived here that long, where someone that I met, um, who's a, so my friend Nitten's uncle knew this, this guy my age, our age from Georgia, who had moved here to Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory. And I, I said, oh yeah, he's, he said he was an electrical engineer. And I was like, I actually know an electrical engineer there. It's my roommate's work friend's girlfriend. And it turned out that they were in the same group. I was like, if you meet someone named Jamie, she's really nice. And he met Jamie because they were in the same group. And I was like, I introduced these two complete strangers from like like four degrees of separation because of me, which was crazy. Um, and uh, that was just insane to me that, that they were, that they met. And I was like, oh yeah, there's just like this off chance. Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory is massive. Like you won't meet this person, but in case you do, and he did. So I was trying to keep this short because usually Hannah comes downstairs to eat breakfast, but she's not here yet. Um, anyway, yeah, this is an actual short one, but since it's Monday morning, I'm going to wrap this up because everyone in my house has to go to work and eat breakfast and stuff. So this baby sweater, maybe I'll show it to you when it's done. I do the ends, by the way, like the Weed and Steven method. Or um, I learned it actually from Earth Tones Girl, but I'll link both of those tutorials in my show notes. How you weave in ends basically as you go. I always do that with stripes, um, just because it's easier. The only time I don't do that with stripes is if I'm knitting socks and the yarn would be woven in on the bottom of the foot. So I try to not, um, I should just try not to ever weave in ends that way in a sock. I always start the sock at the beginning stripe at the beginning of the round so that I'm weaving it in over the top of the foot. If that made any sense, it may not have, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, otherwise, um, I think that's it. So thank you for watching. This has been Tiny Desk Knitting with Emma. Bye!